guys, Rick Maris Golf. Uh, so I'm back in Europe, a windy Europe. And uh, yeah, welcome back to um, one of my usual haunts. You've probably seen this place before. I'm pretty sure I've done two, three videos here. You'll, uh, you'll recognize Alice the dog. Uh, so basically I've got a bit of a grassy area here. I use, um, I use a practice mat so as to not uh, tear up the owner's lawn. But there's an outdoor riding school about 30 yards away from me there. It's about 80 yards long, so perfect for uh, hitting sand wedges, gap wedges, half pitching wedges and stuff into that area. Good place to work on. Anyways, topic of today's video is um, the illusion of control. Now, how did I come uh, about this title or this topic? Well, my last video, was a practice session in Long Beach at a place called Recreation Park. And one of my subscribers pointed out that even though I was trying in that practice session to get more of a hip turn, I was never really raising my left heel. Now you'd think if I was making a huge hip turn, that heel would come off the ground, a la Ben Hogan, a la Sam Snead, and all those guys. So it got me thinking, even though I was trying and in my mind, I was making a huge hip turn, I probably wasn't. And you know the old saying in golf, an inch feels like a mile. Um, you really need to force yourself to exaggerate things if you want to achieve something different. But thinking about it a bit more in depth, it's more complex than that. It's not just as simple as, you know, exaggerate everything. I want to know why that happens. I'm more interested in uh, being aware of exactly why it happens and that will make my brain um, more capable of correcting it. So I think the reason this happens or the reason I wasn't making a huge hip turn was because the body is extremely, the body and the mind are extremely poor of giving up control in the uh, golf swing and I will, I will explain uh, further. You have to give up control to gain control. We've all heard that saying, but it's very true. And to give up control, you need to be less obsessed with that little white mischievous thing on the ground there. That is one of the major secrets in the golf swing, is not being so preoccupied with the ball, but being more focused on the target and the actual swinging of the club. Easier said than done. I'll give you an example as to why I think this happens. The way evolution has happened, the way our bodies, our minds are designed in human beings is like once we focus on something, we're very uncomfortable detaching from it. And detaching can be in the form of the club head getting far away from it. If my goal is to hit this ball with the club head, and the further this club head gets away from the ball, the more uncomfortable I feel, okay? Because that distance means my ball-mind connection is larger, okay? It's getting further away now. Over here, it's got a lot more to do to get back to that, okay? A lot more can go wrong. If it only comes back to here, very little can go wrong to get it back there, okay? So when I am so ball-focused, my tendency is probably not to make a large enough turn away from the ball with my back. I made a video about that, okay? Fear of what's behind us. And quickly, just to recap that, I suggest you go watch it, but as humans, our eyes only look forward, okay? A tiny bit of peripheral, but we're not like flies or, or um, reptiles or anything. We don't have a larger field of vision. So it's very uncomfortable for human beings to not see what's behind them. We don't want to do it. That's not in our nature which is one of the reasons we feel uncomfortable getting a big shoulder turn our backs to the target, okay? But that's along the same, that's in the kind of like the same vein as this, isn't it? We're uncomfortable getting a big turn behind the ball because we're giving up control of this distance to the ball, okay? Anytime we feel like any part of our body in the golf swing is making a huge movement, and that, that would include lifting my heel, you know? big hip turn on the back swing, then my brain just goes, uh-oh, a lot of stuff has moved there. I'm going to have to make a lot of different movements in the downswing to make contact. It's much easier to just be very rigid here, move very little, 
and then my brain thinks, well, that's easy. Not much has moved on the way back. Not much has to move on the way through, but that's not a good golf swing, okay? Good golf swing, there is a lot of movement. I know you hear commentators say, oh, look at that beautiful swing, very few moving parts. Compared to what? Compared to Jim Furyk? Compared, I mean, what are they comparing it to? I mean, it, sometimes they come out with this stuff and I just think it's like utter rubbish. There are a lot, a lot of moving parts in the golf swing. Some swings look different to others and we could go into that. You know, I could spend hours on why they do and why some are more aesthetically pleasing than the others. And I might make a video about that one day, but cut long story short, a lot of stuff moves in the golf swing. It just does. To hit a powerful shot, a lot of stuff has to move. Granted, it has to move in the correct sequence, but your brain is uncomfortable with that. It just is. It's not the way we were designed. So, moral of the story is, if I am less ball-focused or the connection between my mind, the club, my body parts and the ball is smaller and I, I exaggerate my connection to myself and the target or myself and the swing, the movement of the club head around my body, then the ball just ends up getting in the way and because of that I am not so fearful or so uncomfortable about getting the club head or getting my body parts moving away from the ball, getting the club head a long distance from the ball and making huge movements with my body parts. I will be less uncomfortable doing that and that will just produce a better swing. So give it a try. I suggest you go and video yourself hitting balls blindfolded or with your eyes closed. Just be careful where you do this because you're going to shank a few of them. But don't worry about where the ball goes, but just compare those videos of you hitting the ball with your eyes closed so that you're more in tune with the body parts in the club compared to you hitting a ball. You'll be amazed. You'll be amazed at how much better your swing looks. Okay? It's just... I went through a spell where I would watch the club head on the way back as much as I could and the contact contact wasn't always as good you can imagine because I'm not looking at where the club head has to go but boy was the shape of the swing much better so if you can blend those two things you're on the path to success so try that out just be aware you're probably as an amateur really focused on the ball because it's a natural thing to be it is a ball sport after all but you need to be much more focused on the target and less afraid of losing control or disassociating yourself from this ball and that will help you out help you out a lot in your golf swing okay i'm going to leave it at that i think you get the gist of it i'll see you again soon with another um tips and tricks video i guess uh, thanks to my subscriber that uh, brought that hip thing to my attention uh, props to you keep leaving comments um, keep telling your friends about the channel please give us a thumbs up and uh, subscribe if you haven't already and yeah, have a pleasant rest of the day. See ya.